I'm Drew, and today I wanted to talk about VCV Rack, which is a modular synthesis emulator that you can run on Linux, Mac, and Windows. It's an open source piece of software that lets you build your own synthesizer out of basic components. And I couldn't think of anyone better than Graham Morrison to come on and talk to me about modular synthesis. But before we get into that, Graham, would you mind telling us a little bit about your history with synthesizers? Hi, Drew. For me personally, it was like when I was 15, I, I worked in a video shop and saved up all my money and bought a, a KWA K1 Mark II, which is a, a digital synth, actually. This is about 1988. And I stayed in the realm of digital synthesis for some time until um, somebody gave me a broken Poly 6. And I've still got the KWA K1 II and the Poly 6 with me. Um, and I've, I've loved synths and the sounds that they make ever since then. And you've also got into modular synthesis, which is seeing a bit of a resurgence, right? It's, it was kind of big for a long time uh, back in the 70s and then kind of fell off in the 80s. But in the 2000s, it's been really coming back alive. The trajectory of that is really interesting. I think a lot of us got obsessed with uh, DAWs, um, making music in computers in the mid 90s, late 90s, you got software synths, which suddenly gave those of us without any money, like the ability to have a mini Moog in running in software on your in, in Cubase VST, for example. And that was just incredible, phenomenal. Um, and then for a while, I think a lot of us were obsessed with going down the software route and pouring over our screens. Ableton Live was released. And then if anyone else is like me, you kind of start thinking, God, I spend all day working on the computer. And then my hobby is also looking at the screen, making more sounds. I'm going to try and break out of the screen a little bit. Um, there was a low barrier for entry in this this kind of form factor called Eurorack, even though it's kind of known for being expensive. In fact, it is possible to do it cheaply, these separate modules that you piece together and build your own kind of dream synthesizer or dream generative music processing system um, right there in a box in front of you without ever having to look at a screen again. Could you explain a little bit how that differs from something that's a little more monolithic? and sort of the basic modules that kind of go into this. Okay, so I'm just going to turn up the sound on my Euro rack, um, see if we can generate sound from an oscillator. So there's the sound from an oscillator. That's actually a square wave, um, which, is, which describes the shape of the waveform. But the most interesting waveform from a harmonic point of view is a sawtooth, which is this sound. The oscillator, it, it, it doesn't have any kind of pitch yet it's kind of it's kind of wild and um you can change the pitch of it the oscillator it's not very interesting in its own a lot of the character from a synthesizer is due to another module which is the filter every synthesizer has its own kind of character filter circuit design this filter it takes out parts of the harmonic depending on the frequency so if i just reduce the cutoff frequency. This is a low pass filter. It's letting only the low part of the frequency spectrum through. There's another thing often called Q or resonance, which emphasizes the point where the cutoff cuts the audio off. It's the classic filter sweep. And the two things become more interesting when you push them through a third module type, which is called an envelope. And the envelope basically changes the amount of cutoff or filter or amplitude or both over time. You trigger the envelopes with a gate. So you have to, you typically send the gate from a keyboard or from a sequencer. So let's see if this works. So that's the sound of the sawtooth oscillator going through a cut off filter, low pass frequency filter being controlled by two envelopes one that's controlling the amplitude and one that's controlling the filter. If I trigger some notes automatically and I change, for example, the rate of attack on the envelope for the amplitude. Which would be the rate at which the sound comes up after it's been triggered. Exactly that. This is the effect. Equally, the very other end of the envelope, so there's four stages. It depends actually on the envelope. Drums will have three. This is four. The very last stage is release, and that's the suddenness of the sound going off. 
You see it's got longer. Mm-hmm. And then the two middle parts, there's the decay, which is the amount of time it takes for the amplitude to go down from the original attack amplitude. You can't. You can hear that actually when there's uh, no sustain release. There's no release, so this is the decay sound. So you can see how decay is used a lot in drums to make very short and snappy drums. And then after that, the last stage is sustain, which is the, the volume when you hold down, well, when the gate stays open. The amplitude, rather. And that's basically all there is to it. <laughs> well, you say that, but with modular synthesis, the whole idea is that you can take the output from just about any portion of this and route it to the input of just about any other portion. So you can control how the amplitude works from, say, another filter or another envelope and really create some bespoke, interesting sounds by patching these things in ways that nobody else has really thought to do it and by controlling individual aspects of the sound modification process through these really intricate patchwork systems. In hardware, it's all done with cables. But recently, a project has been started to emulate the Eurorack model on computers. And that project, which is VCV Rack, has really been shaking things up a little bit. It has been lowering the barrier to entry for modular synthesis down to, well, do you have a computer? If the answer is yes, you can pretty much get into it because this system is free to use. There are paid modules, there are closed source modules, but there are also open source modules that are free. And they're all available right there on the website. So I had a play with this way back when it was first released and it was really rough. It crashed a lot. It didn't have any connections to Jack Audio, but it was really cool. And once it hit 1.0, I saw that in my newsfeed and I thought, well, maybe it's time to take another look at this. Let's see if it's matured. Let's see if it's stable. And sure enough, it's been running great for me. Now, Graham, you had a chance to play with VCV a little more as well, right? And I was wondering what your impressions were of it. Yeah, I mean, I've used it for some time as well. Um, it's, ama it's an amazing piece of software. It's an amazing project. It's developed so rapidly and captured such a huge mindshare, collective mindshare of the people that are into Eurorack um, that it really is perfectly capable of... Anybody with an infinite amount of money can't use the amount of modules you can drag and drop into VCV Rack. It works flawlessly, the kind of design over connecting cables, the feedback that you get when voltage signals and audio signals are being carried over the cables and triggering various points. It's such a brilliant way of being able to get started and, and understanding the concepts behind all this. You can create you know, your own mini Moog just from using exactly the same components and wiring them up in exactly the same way. I love it. It's a brilliant piece of software. And what I really like about it is that lots of your physical hardware, your Iraq modules, um, actually are open source so they may be running on a dsp but the dsp firmware is open source and you can download it and now you can rather than having to to buy the components or build build the module yourself you can actually use vcv rack as a kind of an emulator for the hardware that you can load up the actual real firmware which i think is really exciting for some of the really ex the really out there modules well, and what's more is in true modular fashion, you can connect VCV rack to your Eurorack system and have it work. So it can become an integrated part of your existing or possibly future rack system, which I think is just super cool. So you can just basically convert MIDI to control voltage and the whole thing just works. It's kind of like black magic in a way. Yeah, I mean, even if you don't want to go the MIDI route, if you happen to have a DC coupled audio interface and there's lots of, they've been around for like 10 years, so you can pick up one from 10 years ago, runs on Linux. As long as the output is DC coupled, the audio outputs, that is, those audio outputs are quite capable of driving the voltage inputs on your Iraq equipment. So if you, for example, send, 
a low frequency audio waveform out of Audacity through out of a DC coupled output on your audio interface and plugged it into a voltage controlled oscillator. Those input voltages are like either five plus or minus five volts or 12 volts. It's the kind of standard. Your actually DC coupled audio interface will drive it exactly like a proper piece of your rack equipment. So you don't have to go through the whole analog digital digital conversion of MIDI and MIDI is also pretty low resolution which is you know another advantage of using the audio interface it's it works really well yeah I'm I'm really excited to start trying that I don't have any outboard equipment of my own at least not as far as the Eurorack or Moog style synthesizers although I I do drool over them every time I look at them but I am a big fan of teenage engineering and I have a few of their pocket operators and I am looking at ways that I can connect to those so that I can get a gate output or, you know, a clock, which would just be a gate output on a, on a timer and send that through my pocket operators to be able to sync them up and be able to play those on top of VCV rack and route all of it into my digital audio workstation for recording. I just think that would be so fun and so cool as you know a nice little sunday project yeah and in fact now that you mention it one of the modules i've got is built by mutable instruments that make a lot of the open source modules and it's a midi to cv converter and in, in uk pounds it's like 15 pounds you build it yourself it's a very very simple circuit and it just has a usb input um it appears as a midi interface on your linux system or whatever system you're using and you can output cv directly and it's a really low cost way of you know getting connected you could connect it to a raspberry pi so i don't know if, if any pocket operators have a usb port on but if you plug that in it might appear as a usb interface oh no they are very simple little machines i mean they're called a pocket operator because they're about the size of a credit card yeah and uh, they just have little buttons and play sounds and they're kind of like a mix between a drum machine and a synthesizer um but with some extra functionality built on top but the only real inputs and outputs are um 3.5 millimeter audio jacks. Right, right. How have you found VCV rack? I mean, going from like a limited palette of, of kind of equipment to kind of an, in, an infinite Euro rack setup, how, how did you find that? I hadn't been able to play with any modular systems for probably about a decade. Um, Way back when I used to work in pro audio, I was doing a gig with Moogfest with the Moog Foundation, and they had purchased the Wall of Doom, which used to be Emerson, Lake, and Palmer's uh, gigantic synthesizer. And they chopped it up to six individual parts that all were on rolling cases. Uh, they were a little easier to ship around than this gigantic synthesizer. And they used it as an educational tool um, where new beginners to synthesis could see what modular synthesis was really like. So I got to play with that a little bit and then nothing for like 10 years. Uh, well, nothing except, you know, the, the monolithic style uh, VSTs and maybe a keyboard here and there, but nothing to this level. So when I started playing with VCV rack, it was like the whole world opened up before me and I could create sounds that I didn't know was really possible. And it is so much fun to get in there and start throwing in a few modules and see how this particular oscillator can get affected by this particular signal path and routing things back and forth. And the breadth of options is astounding. And once you realize that it's truly an unlimited platform, uh, really only limited by the amount of CPU power that you have, you start to see the potential. And even if you're just looking at some examples on YouTube, you can start to see how crazy you can get with this and how minute you can make the adjustments. It's been really eye-opening for me. And really instructional on how old synthesis used to be done. Like you think back to those old Pink Floyd albums like Dark Side of the Moon, where they've got those long synth solos. And you're realizing it's a bunch of guys who've patched a bunch of stuff together and are turning knobs in real time to create these sounds. Like that's how they did those albums. And now you can do it in software. That's crazy. Yeah. 
It is. But I have to admit, trying to trying to keep to some kind of schedule or some kind of minimalism, and especially if you you kind of like simple melodies or things like it's virtually impossible because you just you just want to attach one more patch point. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like you've got you've got a sound and it's sounding pretty good, but you're like, but what if it was a little brighter? Yeah. And I, I, I think that's a real problem. <laughs> one more module and I think it's there. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that great music, I think, was because the hardware was relatively limited and you couldn't have this, you know, an infinite number of oscillators. Yeah, there is something to be said about improving art by constraining it. And this is definitely the opposite of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is an opportunity. I mean, as you say, no one's ever been able to put a 64 oscillator synth together, not realistically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you don't really get the amount of infinite possibilities unless you're somebody with just a ton of cash, right? And some of those artists that really I think of, you know, you can think of the old ones like ELO, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, or even Devo, who had just lots of cash to be able to spend on these things thanks to their production teams. But one that really sticks out in my mind is one of my favorite artists, and that's Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails. Beyond the albums that he's made, he's been doing a lot of film soundtracks with Atticus Ross recently, all of which feature modular synthesis. He is a renowned creator of sounds. And whether you like industrial music or not, the way that he can create these patches to create complex yet simple melodies is, to me, a thing of beauty. No, it's interesting that you bring up Trent Reznor because I think that's what's important with all of these possibilities is that's what makes people like Trent Reznor so, so unique is that the, it's another tool and he's always, whether it was 8-bit crunching samplers in you know the late 80s or early 90s or those the textures that he went through with the downward spiral and the fragile and all that late stuff like the ghost stuff. Um, I mean, those sounds are very clean. In fact, you know, when we're talking about the infinite possibilities of VCV rack, his, his melodies, like you just said, are simple. Um, and that's really important. And maybe that's what it takes. That's what the difference is when, when you, you have to be Trent Reznor. You have to see the wood for the trees and know that, no, I couldn't get this any other way. It's the need for a vision when you're approaching something like this, that you have an endpoint in mind, maybe. And that's kind of what I'm missing is I start playing and I see where I end up versus knowing where I want to be and working to get there. Yeah. And I'm the same. I mean, and I like simple melody, but I also like evolving and kind of programmable me uh, melody and that's another thing that Eurorack does really well you can you can use a, a binary counter for example to transpose the pitch of an oscillator over time and this is you know simple counting over a melody and if you have two or three of these in unison it can go on for a thousand years oh yeah and randomness um that's that's another huge aspect of this modular synthesis is that you can introduce randomness in just about any place you want and allow the computer to do some of the lifting for you to create something that you couldn't even think of on your own just based on the fact that it's chaos. Yeah, and that's actually something we should mention is that unlike this stuff in front of me now with all the wires sticking out, you can click save in VCB rack. <laughs> <laughs> and recall, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. You can just pull the patch right back up. Whereas back in the 70s, they used to literally show cartoons while they were repatching the Wall of Doom. I didn't know that. That's cool. Well, Graham, we've better get out of here. But for anybody out there listening, if you're playing with VCV Rack and you've created something pretty cool, I'd love to hear it. Be sure to post it on Twitter and tag me. I'm at Drew of Doom. And Graham, people can reach you on Twitter as well, right? Yeah, I'm at Degville. You can find the show notes for this episode and all other Jupiter Extras at extras.show. And since we were talking about modular synthesis today, I thought there would be no better way to end this episode than to play ourselves out with a patch that Graham and I passed back and forth between each other. Thanks for tuning in. 